Welcome dear students. This is a very good conceptual problem which involves concepts of both SHM spring and the displacement. So the question says that there is a given figure in which the block is attached with a system of ideal springs and if the block is displaced by a small distance x from its equilibrium position vertically downwards and released then you have to find the time period of the oscillations, the deformations of the strings and let us see how to approach this question. Suppose this is our arrangement. Now you know one thing that if you take an, a horizontal spring system or a vertical spring system, we know in both cases the time period is the same what 2 pi under root m upon k isn't it so in order to simplify this we will take this arrangement on a horizontal table so that you don't get confused with gravity and all answer will be the same if you take it horizontal or vertical but we are taking it horizontal for the it is lying on a horizontal plane let us take for the convenience now what is happening suppose we pull this mass in this direction by x distance and hold it here itself by our own hands then what do you think let us say some tension all the strings will be stretched so let us say the tension developed in this string is t so here also it will be t now pull is massless and ideal so here the tension will be what 2t and if here tension is 2t then here also it will be 2t and if here 2t then here it will be t and here it will be t okay this is the arrangement of the tension now what can you say the deformation in this spring let us see let us say the deformation in this string x1 it will be what force upon k that means t upon 2k is the deformation or the elongation in this string what will be the elongation in this string let us say x2 x2 will be what 2t upon k 2t upon k and what will be the deformation here elongation elongation it will be x3 will be what t upon k okay so you got the elongations or the deformation in all the three springs now let us start about the displacement of the pulleys and we will start from upwards okay so here you see this is fixed this is fixed that means whatever if the elongation in this spring is x3 that means how much this will pulley will go down it will go down by x3 upon 2 okay this is a very simple logic because if you see suppose a string is there and a pulley is there and this string increases its length by x then the pulley will have to go down by x by 2 so that x by 2 strength length is compensated here and x by 2 is compensated here so whole x is compensated when pulley goes down by x by 2 so by the uh, this logic if x3 is elongation in this one then this pulley goes down by x3 upon 2 okay now what about this puri agar is rasti is spring ki jagah ek inextensible rope hota tab ye puli kitna niche jati this puli would also have gone down by x3 by 2 only if it was a inextensible rope but it is a not an inextensible rope it has also underwent some extension that is x2 that means this pulley will go down x3 upon 2 plus x2 because both will add the extension effect plus the down effect of this pulley okay so this pulley has gone down by this much okay now you see if this spring was an inextensible rope then and this pulley went down by this much then what would m have gone down m would have gone down by twice of this range same similarly log, uh, logic is same as here it is if this pulley goes down by x then m goes by twice of x because this length is fixed in case it was a rope but here it is a spring so we will have to add the extension of this one also that means 
the total downward movement of mass m will be what twice of this one x3 by 2 plus x2 plus this x1 isn't it so this whole should be x because we have pulled it down by x so now write it x is what x is x3 plus 2x2 plus x1 okay now if you solve it putting the all the values then what will you get x3 here x3 is t by k x2 is 2t by k and x1 is t by 2k so if you put all the values you get x is equal to what x equal to t upon k plus 4t upon k plus t upon 2k that means x is what x is 11t upon 2k okay now how to find the time period of this one suppose if we release it we are holding it right now and if we release it with what acceleration it will go up let us say a that means t is equal to m a so put it over here x is equal to what x equal to 11 m a upon 2 k and we know the time period formula is what is 2 pi under root x upon a so if you put it from here then time period you get 2 pi under root 11 m upon 2 k this is the time period of the oscillation okay now you see here you have got x3 also x2 also x1 also and x is here so very easily you can find out the ratio of i mean x1 x2 x3 you can find out easily in terms of x so if you will do that you will find that all these options are correct time period we have already found so this is correct this is correct this is correct all will be correct so this is how we attempt it now let us take the other question in this question it is lying on a horizontal plate horizontal platform frictionless two rods are there and their masses are m and l they are identical and they are traveling something like this it is traveling with velocity v and colliding with the edge of the other rod and sticking with it after collision it is sticking with it permanently so that it is becoming a right angle rigid body after the collision okay so you have to find the velocity of the center of mass and the angular velocity of this rigid body after the collision okay so let us see how we should do it just before the collision this is the situation okay this rod is traveling by v and this is stable and after the collision they both have become a common rigid body because it is glued over here so where should be the center of mass if the center of this rod is here t1 and the center of this rod is here c2 then the midpoint of this system that is p this is the center of mass of this whole rigid body isn't it and from pythagoras we can very easily say that c1 c2 is what c1 c2 is nothing but l by root 2 isn't it so c1 p you, also you can say that here now you apply the momentum conservation because on this whole system there is no external force so momentum will remain conserved what is momentum over here momentum is pi is mass of the rod times velocity and what is the momentum over here after the collision it has become a rigid body and let us say the center is moving with some velocity capital b then pf is what this is p is center of mass ps is 2m because both rods have now joined 2m times v let us say vcm okay vcm so pi should be equal to pf that means mv should be 
2 mv cm and very easily you will get that velocity of center of mass should be v by 2 okay so this one option you got now what about the angular velocity because it will also have an angular impulse so all the system will start rotating let us say how now we'll talk about angular momentum here you see this is moving with velocity v initially before collision and after collision it is it has become something like this this is the point p it is traveling here with velocity vcm and this whole body is rotating with angular velocity let us say how much omega this rotation will be about center of mass of the system that means about p only this will be rotating so two motions are there the center of mass is moving linearly and it is also rotating so for the if we are observing from the frame of center of mass obviously it is an inertial frame because it is moving with a uniform velocity so very well we can take it our frame of reference so here before collision what is the scenario you see before the collision p was here okay what was the initial angle also you see on this whole system there is no external torque that means whatever was angular momentum over here same will be the angular momentum over here isn't it so let us see how to equate li is what li is what m mass of rod m v times this distance this perpendicular distance m v x now very easily you can say that if this is c1 and this is c2 then c1 p is what c1 p is l by 2 root 2 okay and what is x it will be x x will be l by 4 because angle is 45 degree so li is what m v l by 4 initial angular momentum is this one okay now here what is the angular momentum let us it the whole system is rotating about the common center of mass that is p and let us take this point as c1 initial i mean the center of mass of this rod and c2 is the cm of this rod then you will uh, final angular momentum is what it is ip angular moment of inertia about p times omega okay now ip is the technical part which you need to calculate carefully ip is the moment of inertia so we will take the moment of inertia of both the rods about ip so what about this horizontal i mean this one rod the c1 rod its moment of inertia about ip will be what it will be i about its own center plus m times c1 p square isn't it p1 p square plus what about the other rod similarly it is i about the center of its i mean about its own center plus c2 p square okay now if you put the value of c1p c1p is what you see l by 2 root 2 and c2p will also be the same because it is the midpoint so you put and i c1 is what ml square upon 12 so if you solve it you get ml square upon 12 plus ml square upon 8 twice of this so this is what this is nothing but 5 ml square upon 12 okay this is 5 upon 12 ml square this is the ip now you simply put li is equal to f li equal to lf if you put then li is what mvl upon 4 mvl upon 4 this is what ip that is 5 upon 12 ml square times omega okay so if you uh, solve it 4 goes here it becomes 3 and m and l m and l cancel so very easily you get what omega is 3v upon 5l 3v upon 5l so this is how you 
got the angular velocity of the system. So now you see in your options, you see what is there? This is omega this one, 3v upon 5l. So this b and t, these are the correct options. Okay. So I hope it is clear. And if you have any questions, any doubts, then please feel free to ask in the comments. I'll be happy to respond. Thank you.